Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring Konosuba, God's blessing on this wonderful world, TRPG. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this role-playing game based on the popular Isekai series, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about main play, its scenes, its faces, and experience points. Main play is where the scenario is put to use and when the game is played. As mentioned before, main play is split into four phases. Each of these phases contains several scenes. First, let's take a look at scenes. Sessions in Konosuba TRPG progress through scenes, each of which is an individual situation within the game. You can think of a scene in this role-playing game as any situation in the anime of Konosuba, as any scene within that show. Sessions are a collection of these scenes, with the entire scenario providing the information to link each scene together. The Game Master can, of course, create scenes not prepared in the scenario based on how the session moves along, and if the players need the Game Master to create a scene, they can also propose this. Each scene has a number of player characters and non-player characters that are going to participate in that scene. They enter the scene, they interact within the scene, and then the scene ends. Some characters may exit the scene before it ends, and it is possible for a player character or non-player character to enter the scene halfway through. They can propose this to the game master, and it's up to the game master if it makes sense with the situation. When it comes to master scenes, these are scenes created by the game master to describe some things that are not necessarily related to the player characters. The player characters may not even be in them. The game master presents these situations as the type of scenes that you would see in an anime show, where the main characters are not participating in them, but they are still useful for world building and exposition. I would recommend that these master scenes are somewhat brief, so that the player characters do not feel a bit too bored or left out of the situation, in my opinion. In other words, when you play the Konosuba TRPG, you feel both like an actor within the show, but also you could feel at times like a viewer or an expectator enjoying his or her favorite anime show. Let's talk about the phases of main play. There is the opening phase. This is the introduction to the story that will be told in the session. Here the game master explains and or acts out anything related to the player character's objectives and incidents related to that introduction. I think it would be a great idea to have the player characters act out a bit, roleplay between each other, just like in Konosuba when the main characters are just deciding how to pick quests, what quest to undertake, this is a great situation for that. This phase usually ends when the player characters decide to take on a quest. They will be rewarded if they manage to complete a mission, a quest, and these quests could compose an entire campaign. Now, when it comes to the middle phase, this is separated into dungeon scenes and research scenes. The middle phase ends when it moves to the climax phase. Let's talk about dungeon scenes. They are just what they sound like, scenes in which player characters explore a dungeon or other dangerous sites. When it comes to areas during dungeon scenes, each separate room or passage will change the scene when players enter it. These individual chambers are called areas. Generally, one area is treated as one scene. Let's talk about research scenes. They include scenes leading up to a dungeon or scenes where player characters investigate the dungeon itself or the quest. These are used when players are trying to find dungeons or attempting to corroborate the job or the person who made the request among other things. Now, while the player characters are exploring the site, they will reach the climax phase. This is where the players fight the true enemy, the boss character. Of course, there is no requirement for this phase to involve a battle, but this is the best time to get excited about combat. Often, this phase is about the players leveraging everything they have to their advantage. The climax phase ends once all enemies standing in the way have been defeated. Then you move on to the ending phase. This is for the story's epilogue, 
where the characters act out what happens after the dust settles. It can include scenes where the quest giver thanks them or where they split up rewards. The type of scene will depend on the scenario itself as well as the result of the session. Then we have the ending main play. When the ending phase is over and the game master announces that the scenario has ended, main play, which is the mid of the session, ends and things move to after play. After play is when the various tasks needed to end the game take place, such as distributing experience points to players and cleaning up. The players need to pay for their chosen lifestyles. Player characters cannot pay for other players during after play. It is possible to have player characters trade money among themselves, but only before the ending phase concludes. If a player can't make their lifestyle payment, the experience points they gain from the session are reduced. If this issue arises during a campaign, the game master treats whatever value couldn't be paid as a debt and may work it into the story of the scenario in the future. When it comes to experience points, the game master distributes experience points to all players. The players will also distribute experience points to the game master by writing it on their session sheets. The game master can level up non-player characters, such as allies or enemies, using these experience points. So if, as a game master, you have a favorite ally or enemy that is being used as a recurring character, this is your excuse to spend some experience points in that character or those characters. Now when it comes to players checking their characters, when main play ends, the player characters have completed a single adventure. However, their exploits will continue. After play is for preparing for just that. When it comes to dead player characters, they are removed from the game. The player whose character died should care for their character sheet like they would a tombstone. In addition, even if a player character dies, the player still receives experience points as normal. When it comes to living player characters, all player characters who are still alive will now prepare for their next adventure. All living characters recover from any damage they took during the main play, and blessings will return to their value. We will talk about blessings in a future part of this review. You distribute items and other things amongst the player characters, the player characters use their experience points to level up, and then you clean up. Once all the player characters are finished doing what they need to do, all that remains is to clean up the space you used. This is important so that the house's owner, facility managers, etc. will happily allow you to use it for future sessions. Once you've finished cleaning up, it can be extremely fun to move somewhere else. To talk about the session and about the next session. Now when it comes to experience points, you win experience points in this role-playing game by participating in the session, completing quests, encountering enemies, encountering traps, good roleplay, providing a location to play the session, helping the session move along, all sorts of things, and this also applies to the game master. So this role-playing game encourages participation and role-play. This concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about combat. I like the way that sessions are divided through faces and scenes. It's going to feel as if you are watching an anime series. I think you need a bit of mastery or finesse when it comes to handling scenes, deciding what characters are going to participate in a particular scene, if a player character or non-player character should make a surprise exit or entrance halfway through the scene, and I also like the way experience points are handled, encouraging other activities besides killing enemies, and I also like it that the game master also wins experience points. That way, you can have your favorite villain or hero participate alongside the player characters. However, I would recommend that you do not hug the spotlight. They are there to support the player characters, the main stars of the show. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you who have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.